In today's video, I'm going to show you a little portable power station that packs in a ton of features. Welcome to Freely Roaming. My name is Dan. I've been using portable power stations for a long time since I've been on the road. It's honestly one of the secrets for living off-grid. Sure, it's nice to have a well thought out and well built electrical system, but there's guarantee going to be one of those times when you need to plug something in and there's just not an outlet available. This goes for things like phones, tablets, cameras, or even bigger items like laptops or portable air compressors. Power station can range from little pocket ones that's the size of your phone to huge ones that can power an entire house. It is a category of products that have been expanding in the past decade. Today I want to show you a product that straddles the gap between the small to mid-sized power stations. This right here is the Gulu GTX 280. Honestly, I've never heard of the name until they reached out to me. And when I saw it, it looked like a pretty innovative product. First things first, let me give you some product specs. With a capacity of 280 watt hours, it's not just a little battery that can charge your phone. Of course it can do that, but it's also got plenty of power to run most of your off-grid devices. Let me show you quickly what's inside the box. This is the main body of the power station. As you can see, it's really small for a battery bank that has the capacity that it does. Even though it's small, a rival's unit's doubled its size, and it's actually quite usable because of its portable size. It has an IP65 waterproof and dustproof rating. So between that and its portability, it's ready to go out on any adventures with you. But keep in mind that the IP rating only applies to when the device is not being used, because it has these rubber doors that need to be closed for it to retain that waterproof and dustproof rating. And obviously when these doors are shut, you can't use the device. With a maximum power output of 150 watts, you're not gonna run a blender or an induction stovetop with this thing, but it will charge a laptop more than two times. One of the ways that got this thing so small in size is because it does not have a built-in AC inverter, but instead it has a separate AC inverter unit. This is the AC inverter unit. It's a separate one that plugs into the cigarette lighter outlet and can power up to 120 watts. Even though this power station has a output rating of 150 watts, the 120 watt rating is because that it's using the cigarette lighter socket, which usually has a 10 amp output rating. The way that it works is that you just simply plug it into the cigarette lighter. And there you have a power station with full AC inverting capabilities. This is however just a modified sine wave inverter. With this size, you're not gonna find a pure sine wave unit. To be honest, when I first saw this product, I was excited because of the innovative approach that they took to separate these two units to make it more portable. However, I was hoping for a better integration between the inverter and the battery itself because this little inverter device just looks like any little car inverter that you can buy from a truck stop. However, it does have USB-C power delivery at 30 watts as well as a quick charge port. And it also has a pass-through cigarette lighter plug on the other side. There's a large display on the power bank Although it's got relatively small amount of data that shows, it just shows basically the state of charge and also the power output and some air code shows up as icons on the side, but I do find it to be adequate. The only way to charge this device is through the USB-C port. Here you have all the ports hidden behind this rubber gasket. It's got a USB-C bi-directional port, a couple of USB-A ports, a barrel port, and also this uh, DC output port that I'll show you a little bit more later. And down here, you have the cigarette lighter socket. On the other side, what power station would be complete without having an LED light? Complete with SOS mode and a strobe mode. All joking aside, this power station being as compact as it is, actually makes this LED light much more useful. You can almost use it as a flashlight compared to the big power stations where you carry it by the handle with the LED light, which nobody ever seems to use. But I can actually see me using this one. To charge this unit, you have to use the bi-directional USB-C port, which can support up to 100 watts of charging. However, it doesn't come with a 100 watt charger. In fact, it only comes with 
this inverter, which also acts as a DC charger. The way that you use it is you plug this into a cigarette lighter socket and you use the USB-C port from here to connect directly to the charging bi-directional port in here to charge this. Now this is only rated for 30 watts, so you can only charge this at 30 watts using the included DC charger. And it will charge this up in about 10 hours using this method. However, if you have a 100 watt USB-C charger, you can charge this in as little as two and a half to three hours. The manufacturer claims that the 100 watt charger is using a private protocol, so you have to buy their charging adapter to achieve that speed. However, I have found that if you use a USB-C 3.2 or higher cable, along with a MacBook 95 watt charger, I can actually charge this at 95 watts using those two combinations. And because you have to charge this through the USB-C port, it unfortunately does not have pass-through charging. But for a power station as small as this one, it really isn't a deal breaker for me. I don't really see myself needing pass-through charging as when I use this, I will most likely be someplace that doesn't have an outlet available. Personally, I'm excited to use this to couple with my computer that's equipped with USB-C charging. Using a USB-C 3.2 or higher cable, I can charge my computer using this battery bank more than two times. In the past, I would have to lug around a big power station in order to have this capability. But now I can just throw this directly into my backpack and be able to charge my computer and work on my computer wherever I am. Although at almost five pounds, specifically it's 4.65 pounds, this is not gonna be in anybody's ultra light hiking kit. Lastly, I wanna talk about a feature that's not available in any power stations that I've seen. And it's available on this one because of its unique form factor. I've been carrying this thing around for the last seven years as I've been traveling. This is one of those lithium battery jump starters. I had a truck that had a bad battery once, so I bought this for those times when I couldn't have somebody else jump start me so I could do this myself. After I replaced the battery, I no longer needed this, but I still carry this around just in case something were to happen. So I'm happy to say that because I'm switching over to the Gulu GTX 280, I'll get to ditch this altogether. That's because in the box, you also get jumper cables. And that's why you have this DC port over here on the side. Not only does this bridge the gap from a small to a medium sized power station, it is also a lithium jump starter for your vehicle. These are actually some of the most heavy duty clamps I've ever seen. So of course, as with all battery banks, this video wouldn't be complete without some capacity testing. Now I'm testing the DC output of the Gulu XTX 280 straight out of the cigarette lighter it is a very high voltage actually 15.3 volts doesn't look like it's a regulated output it looks like it's a lithium ion pack in 4S configuration so if you have DC appliances that uh, don't like 15.3 this is rather high voltage you may not want to plug directly into this but we'll see how it lasts how long it lasts it's supposed to be a 280 watt hour pack so so far we're about two and a half minutes in and I've got a set at drawing about six amps because that DC output is uh, rated for 150 watts, so I'm drawing about, oh, actually I'm drawing 100 watts. 59%, still drawing 89 watts. We have drawn 92.7 watt hours in the last hour. So this is going to be, I suspect, just over 200 watt hours of output the DC port and you, as you can see here that voltage is dropped to 13.9 so that is not a regulated DC output which is which is expected because this uh, this is a small unit and also this seems to be a 4s lithium ion possibly a nickel manganese cobalt chemistry so that's consistent with the voltage we're seeing here I think we'll go for about another hour or so. We should see the result of this DC discharge test. So below 20%, this light starts to flash. So I'm at 14%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 
and we'll see if we get to 200 watt hours. Two, well, 190, 50 watt hours, 65 watt hours right now. Still pulling 140 watts, which is close to its limit. <clears throat> the limit, I probably believe it's like 10 amps because it uh, sits at like 15 volts when it's fully charged. That's why it's rated for 150 watts. 12.3 volts right now. So that's probably also why they chose to uh, have a 4S lithium ion battery because uh, when the battery starts or the voltage starts to sag at the low end here, still a serviceable voltage you just have to make sure your DC device can work with the high end of this chemistry we're over 200 watt hours so 209 watt hours so far to be exact and we're down to four percent so it's gonna probably die in just a couple minutes now still at a very comfortable 12.7 volts so I'm just gonna let it go until it shuts itself off. 1% left. GTX 280. Any minute now. See if it'll hit 215. I think it will. <clears throat> Certainly it's not gonna hit 220. But uh, we'll calculate just exactly what kind of efficiency. Oh, there it is, went to 0%. Wow, it didn't even hit 215, I was wrong. There it is, 214.87. Tested the Gulu's inverter. So it's inverter is just a little tiny plug-in inverter. This guy right here. And I'm gonna have to see how much capacity it got. 165 watts, which is not great. Just under 10 hours, so it was a pretty slow test. And we only got 165 watts out of a 200 and somewhat watt hour battery. This is not a very efficient inverter, but it is about what you would expect for this form factor though. First of all, the cigarette lighter plugs are pretty inefficient, but convenient connections. And then these small modified sine wave Inverters are just, uh, they're kind of a, a last resort. But this device, on the other hand, I think is a, is a great standalone DC only device. Specifically, it's a great USB C power delivery device because it provides PD100. So, for the form factor, for the size, and the capacity, I think it's a, it's a great device for that. Not so much for the inverter. So as you can tell, the capacity test showed that the battery didn't achieve its full claim capacity by the manufacturer. This is actually quite typical for battery banks versus testing just the battery inside of it. The best DC discharge efficiency that I've ever seen of any power station is at about 87%. This unit only achieved 76.74%, which is a total of 214.87 watt hours. I attribute that to the fact that this unit is so small, so they have to choose components that are favored for its size over its efficiency. The AC discharge test came in even worse at 59%, which is 165 watt hours. This again is due to the inverter included in this unit and how it's connected using the lighter socket. As it is a smaller power station, AC inversion efficiency usually suffers because of it. It is not a big deal to me though because I don't actually plan on using the AC inverter that much for this unit. I plan to use this exclusively for its USB outputs. Specifically, I think this is one of the best units you can get to use with a laptop that's got USB-C charging. If you want to learn more about this power station, I'll put all the links about it in the description below with all the information you can get and also the best deal on where you can get one. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments below. Thanks as always for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.